select the major product of the following reaction. So what we have is we have a diene, so that is a molecule with di or two alkenes, and we have something known as Grubbs catalyst. Um, so we really need to recognize what Grubbs catalyst is, and it's a catalyst for a specific reaction. So this is a ruthenium catalyst, and what we need to know is that the reaction this catalyzes is known as a metathesis reaction. So this catalyzes an alkene metathesis reaction. So what takes place in an alkene metathesis reaction is essentially you have two alkenes. So we could, um, I want that to be a single bond to the R group, not a double bond. Okay, so a single bond. Um, and so this carbon here is gonna be our alkene. So we have, you know, an alkene. And if we have another alkene that lines up with it, what takes place in this metathesis reaction is essentially that the alkenes switch partners so that this carbon atom here, we'll highlight it in pink, will end up with a double bond to the other carbon in pink and that these N2 carbons will be attached to each other. Um, and so this is what will happen in your product. So we would have the R CH, and this is gonna be bound to the other CH and the R. So we brought these two pieces together, and then we also bring these two pieces together. So I'm gonna highlight these carbons again so we can see kind of where they are, where they're coming from. And so alkene metathesis reactions work best when you can form a little alkene. So the small ethylene if this can be formed as a byproduct, this helps to make the reaction favorable because this is a gas. And so what happens when you do that is it just bump, bubbles out of solution. So having a product removed as the reaction's proceeding helps to draw the reaction towards the products. Um, and so when we have a, a metathesis reaction like this, if I drew this as a cyclic, um, you could either line these two alkenes up the way that I've drawn it, or you could flip one over and line it up the other way. So you have a little bit less control. Um, now you can still do those reactions, but what we are going to do in our class is we are only gonna focus on reactions where we have these two alkenes tethered together, which controls how they react. And that's what we're seeing here. Our two alkenes are attached to the same molecule, so when these come together, you're gonna to be forming a ring. So we will only focus on ring closing metathesis. So in that ring closing metathesis, we would say that these two R groups are attached together. So when we bring these two groups in, we've actually formed a ring. So we will focus only on ring closing metathesis for this class. And this is also known as RCM for ring closing metathesis. So in order to figure out our product here, we really just need to find out where the carbon atoms are that are gonna bond. So because they're tethered together, we're gonna to bring together these two interior carbons of the alkene, and then these two exterior carbons of the alkene will also come together, and that's gonna form the byproduct ethylene. So we just want to know what size ring we're forming. So what, what's in this hoop that we put up here? So we want to count from one carbon atom to the other. So we'll count one, two, three, four, five, six. And the other two carbon atoms are going to form that ethylene gas as a byproduct. So in drawing the product, we have initially a six numbered ring. So we're going to go ahead and draw that. And we see we have that methyl group sticking off of the ring. Um, and we can also see that carbons one and two for our new ring are part of this ring. And we can use the methyl group to locate it. We see it's one carbon atom over, so two and then one. And then we wanna draw the rest of that six membered ring. Um, so we're making this bond between carbons one and two as one side of our hexagon. 
So we're gonna draw the rest of the hexagon there. And so I'm gonna number these carbons. Three, four, five, six. And so the new bond is between carbons one and six. So we've got one new bond, but we see in our model that it's supposed to be a double bond when we bring those together. So we've essentially just swapped the alkene partners. So we're forming an alkene here and an alkene here. So I wanna make sure that carbons one and six are joined together with an alkene. And there we have the product. Um, and we wanna make sure, we wanna double check that we haven't lost any carbon atoms, um, except for the two that we were supposed to lose because we also formed that ethylene gas um, from those two, the end carbons coming together. Uh, but this is the major organic product that we are gonna be focusing on. So we wanna take a look and find that here out of our options. And we see only two options that actually have the six-membered ring and they differ in the position of the alkene. The alkene should be where we formed the new bond because we swapped alkene partners. So we want to expect to see it directly attached to that original six carbon atom ring. And if I number this, you should be able to see that it matches what we drew above. 